Now, flat jaw tongs can be fairly versatile. They're fairly straightforward to make, but they really don't hold the best. And for flat stock, you're probably better off with box jaw tongs, which we have not made a pair of box jaw tongs yet. So let's make a pair. <clears throat> if nothing else, that opening scene should remind you why it is so important to wear your safety glasses at all time in the shop. If that piece of hot iron flips out of those tongs and hits you in the eye, it's likely to be permanent damage. You may be blind in that eye forever. And it's so simple to wear a pair of safety glasses. Even my prescription safety glasses are well worth the money compared to losing an eye. A much more secure solution, which means it's safer and it's more efficient, you'll get work done faster if you're not squirreling around in the tongs all the time, would be a pair of box jaw tongs. Box jaw tongs are named for this little box section right through here that holds your material very securely. It, the regular flat jaw holds it from going in and out, just like flat jaw tongs. But the problem is slipping side to side, and the box jaw tongs hold that very securely. You'll be much happier with a pair of box jaw tongs. And to make these, I'm going to start just like I do with most of my lighter weight tongs. I'm not going to make real heavy tongs today. We're going to use 5 8 square bar. This is about 16 mil, I guess, maybe 17 mil. Exact size doesn't matter. Make it out of a material size that is suitable for the material you're going to hold. I'm going to make these for quarter by three quarter, which is what we were working with at the beginning of the video. I also think I'm going to do most of this under the power hammer. We've looked at making tongs by hand at the anvil in lots of videos previously and I'll link to one of those up here and maybe to another one in five or ten minutes throughout the video but if you click on this it should bring up all of the links on the sidebar there so you can look at some of those how to make tongs without tongs how to do it all at the anvil kind of stuff this time I think we'll do it under the power hammer it'll be a little bit faster the video will go quicker the concepts are all the same it's still a matter of half face blows Turn it towards your tong hand, half face blows, turn it towards your tong hand, half face blows. And we'll try to talk about all that as we do it so you understand each step as we progress with these tongs. Now as far as material length, I just have a couple of bars that are way too long. I can make the jaw end, I can start drawing it out, decide how long I want the reins, cut it off. Then I can do another pair of tongs on the other end of the bar, probably get three pairs of tongs out of these bars. The length is just dependent on how heavy you want the reins and how long you want the reins. So it's a good idea to just start with a long bar, make the tongs the way you want them, and then cut them off the bar. Working with flat dies under the power hammer, you need a way to do the half face blows that are required for tong making. And the tool we use not only creates the half face blows, but it provides a depth stop so we don't over forge anything. And this is the tool. It's just a bar of mild steel that's been stepped down in the middle, the thickness you want your jaw and your boss to be. And that's just up to how heavy you want your tongs. For this one, it's about 5 16 of an inch. And you start off just like you would any other tongs by half face blows here. And you'll have to step this in. I'll show you when we get to it why that's important to work it gradually and not just squish it all down in one place. Then you roll it towards your tong hand and create the boss and then roll it away and create the reins. And again, you have to work this incrementally instead of just one big squish right here. Don't hammer that all the way down. You'll end up with a, an offset that will create a cold shut in the long run. So that's, that's the steps under the power hammer, just like this. If you're working really efficiently, you can do all that in one heat, but we'll probably take several just so we can talk about it a little bit. This starts off just like a pair of regular flat jaw tongs.
steps. Steps where the rains are, and it cause cold shots. Clean this up just between the eyes. Now for the other half of our box jaw tongs, we don't want to create two flat jaws. We need to be able to spread the jaw out widthwise. And to do that, instead of using this to create the jaw, we'll fuller her in with a bar, and then we will have something that we can spread sideways. So once it's So this is going to create a step down right here, and then we'll fuller this out sideways to get enough material to spread around our our material for the box jaw. Up for our box jaw. Don't make it too thin. Take this towards your tong hand to create the boss. This part is just like the other part.
box jaw. We'll finish the rain first. Sounds like it started raining while I was doing that, but I couldn't hear it over all the noise and wearing earmuffs. We have the jaw and the boss shape roughed in. I want to go ahead and finish the reins at this point so I can hold them by the reins as I do the rest of it. I think that's a more convenient way for me to work. We'll finish drawing that out under the flat dies, clean those up. Then we'll flip it around. A little bit of this will get done at the anvil to try to round that boss up a little bit and give it a little bit more definition. Then we'll need to spread the the box jaw out sideways, assemble the tongs, fold everything up, and hopefully they work just fine. So we've got the reins pretty much drawn out and you can see they're just not quite the right length but they look like the same width and I think that's more important that they have the same amount of mass so they grip evenly and they are the same strength, same springiness. So once they cool I'll just trim that little end off. I may do a little grinding just to take care of the little burr from cutting it. Then we will flip them around. We'll finish the boss and the jaws, punch holes in them and they should be ready to assemble. So I went ahead and trimmed those to the same length and did just a little cleaning up. The next thing I want to do is refine the boss. They're a little bit oblong shape. I like mine kind of roundish. I just do that here at the anvil this way and this way. Just whatever it takes and I'm going to do the same, try to make them both look the same. Then we'll go back into the power hammer with a fuller and spread this sideways. I just want to kind of Upset that down and round it up a little bit. This is, to a large extent, a personal aesthetic for tongs. But the bigger the boss is, the stronger it'll be. So it doesn't need to be long. It needs to be even all the way around. I'm going to knock the corners off. No reason to have any sharp places. That's already looking better. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. That's about what I want there. I may need to be some filing in here when we go to assemble. Just to make sure everything fits and runs smooth.
I think we can go ahead and punch a hole in it though. Of course this one's a little harder to get into because of the square section that we haven't forged yet. I just prefer to do them in this order. You can certainly do it, draw that out first if you want to. I'm not sure why I'm in this habit, but I am. And punch a hole in that one. I'm going to go ahead and punch a hole in this. You can drill the holes or punch them. I like to punch them just a little bit undersized. And then run a drill in to clean it up, make sure it's exact size. Try and get it perfectly centered. So there's our first hole punched. And I start with the jaw hanging over the edge so that I can get the punch in here and not deform the jaw. Cool punch off every now and then. And then when I come up to the top, I can set the whole thing on top of the anvil without deforming it from the inside. That allows me to put it over the pitchel hole. And there's our second hole. Here are our two tong halves. This one is essentially done. I think I'll put my touch mark on the outside of that while this heats up so we can shape this jaw. This is one of those cases where I'll put the touch mark side by side because there isn't room for it top and bottom. This one can cool until we're ready to assemble. To do this, I'll use this tool. This is a fuller front of the power hammer. We'll put it on here like this. We'll draw it out, out this way. It's just like doing it with a cross peen at the anvil. And if you don't have a power hammer, do it with a cross peen at the anvil. Well, for those of you who have been asking to see more Power Hammer, I hope that satisfied the urge, but I'm afraid I'm done with it for this project. But you can see what we've got here for our box jaw. And these will go together like that, and then this bends up and around the, the other stock. You can also see that if you're using anything wider than what I'm going for here, you're going to need a much bigger piece of material or you're not going to have enough to pull that off. Let's try to clean it up. You can file or grind it if it's 
really misshapen, but the more you do it, the anvil, the easier it'll be in the long run. But I think it is time to let this side cool. I'm a little bit twisted. I think before I do cool it, I'm going to go to the vise and straighten that twist out. This is really pretty common to need to straighten that just a little bit. That yeah, looks a lot better. Just like with any other pair of tongs, once they're riveted together, they're usually really tight. So we're going to put them back in the fire, we're going to work the joint a little bit, get them all loosened up, and then we're going to insert a piece of material the size we want these to fit, and we're going to make them fit. So get those hot and just work them very gently back and forth, and this loosens that joint up just enough. Now if it's really tight, don't bend your reins trying to do that. You may just have to fiddle with a little bit more. I have that piece of material that was causing me so much trouble at the beginning of the video. And you can see right now it fits really loose in there. So these are definitely going to need some adjusting. So we first adjust them just like flat jaw tongs so that that fits. And then we'll go to the vise. Our material sample in there, we want to put this in the vise jaw and bend this over. This is fairly heavy, so it's going to be hard to bend. It may take several heats because it cools off quick. I'm going to go to the other side, every other heat though. just inevitable that it's going to slip some in the vice jaws. I have never seen a post vice that holds that well. Make sure you know where the cold end of this is because it's got a taper in. I know that I'm grabbing the cold end and not the hot end every time. Now you could shape this jaw before you assemble it, but I kind of like doing it assembled even if it's sort of a hassle. And now that that'll hold that, we can actually go to the anvil, although I think I'm going to work on the reins a little bit. You can see how they come together back here. I want to spread that. This is really just a matter of getting everything clamped up in the vise spreading these out till it's comfortable. I think that's a nice comfortable grip. So that is a functional pair of tongs. I think I'm going to take them to the anvil and do just a little bit of cleanup. It'll be, be a little bit easier than working in the vise at this point. This is just the point in tong making where you fiddle, fuss, cuss, and discuss. Maybe there's not much disgusting. Maybe it's more insisting. But I am suddenly much happier with that pair of tongs. It just doesn't stay put too well to do that until you get them bent over some. But that's pretty much a functional pair of tongs. There could be a little straightening through there maybe. Nothing very serious though. But for now, I hope you can get into your shop. Be safe. Wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.